Hi, I'm Duncan Fraser from Pillion, and I want to talk to you about some of the techniques behind eSIM and SIM profile switching so that you can understand whether this is a really useful tool for you and whether it's going to solve any problems in your IoT world. First thing I think to do is to talk about what an eSIM or an EUICC SIM card is. Um, you're familiar with SIM cards from mobile phone use and maybe you're already using cellular technology to connect your IoT devices. An EUICC has firmware on it and storage for profiles to allow you to change how your card appears to be, the, effectively to change the SIM card. Um, and an eSIM is a physical device that is chipped down. You can solder it down to your board. Those two terms, EUICC and eSIM, get used together a lot to the point where you can say one and mean the other. And, and indeed, the profile switching process is defined as the EUICC profile switching, but it enables eSIMs to, to work as well. So. I'll probably say EUICC sometimes and eSIM the other. It's effectively the same thing. It just depends on whether you're going to be inserting this as a, a SIM card with EUICC on it, or it's going to be a chip down, or even an iSIM software solution, which is some of the newer technologies being looked at now, to be able to embed the, the device directly, the SIM device directly into your end product and remotely provision which profile it's using. The GSMA profile switching specification is 400 pages long but at the heart of it is this diagram and this shows the relationship between EUICC and eSIM manufacturers, uh, mobile network operators, system vendors, the end device with, that has the EU, so EUICC in it and some of the services that, that control all of that. Right in the middle of that diagram are the two SMDP and SMSR blocks and they're a good place to start. That's a subscription manager component of this system and the SMDP, that's a subscription manager data preparation block and just below it, the subscription manager secure routing block. The data preparation block holds the profiles that the mobile network operator has prepared so that you can make use of them, you can have them downloaded to your eSIM when you're ready and the secure routing performs that action. It's the secure routing element, which is the piece that we talk to when we say download that SIM and the secure routing goes to the data preparation database, retrieve those and passes them down to the EUICC. So that central block, the subscription manager section, just about everything talks to that at one point and another. And so there's a good place to start there. At the bottom of that diagram, you can see the EUICC and the device, and that's the piece that you're going to be working with. That's your product. The secure, the secure routing element will download a new profile to the EUICC in your device. Um, this means you don't have to do any physical changes. It gives you all the power to be able to manage your cellular network uh, with different network operators, um, change different tariffs, deploy in new areas of the world that you didn't have when your device was first constructed or designed, but for which you now want to operate and now have fresh cellular um, requirements. Having the EUICC allows you to download those profiles in, in real time when you need them. That means that you can load up at the factory a bunch of profiles if you want, or you can leave it until you're in the field. There's always going to be an initial bootstrap connection. Typically, the ones that we use are international, so the device will always be able to sign onto a mobile network, phone home, report that it's online, and wait for instructions for a genuine SIM profile for that region to be downloaded, switched, and then it takes up the identity of a, of a regular card for that, that part of the world. So that's the subscription manager section and the device and EUICC section. Next, let's look at the mobile network operator uh, who, who run the, the physical networks, or maybe they're a virtual network operator who runs special tariffs um, sometimes very useful in an IoT world if there was a specific tariff you want. 
So in the world of SIM cards, there's a, a whole set of data that is on a regular single UICC SIM card. There's a, an IMSI, an International Subscriber Management Identification Number. There's uh, UICC um, data. There are keys to get you on, off and on the network. Um, so there's a whole series of different things that are, on, that are on a SIM card that the local towers and the backend systems of a cellular network will use to validate that, yeah, that's a real card. That's a real SIM card in a real module. I'm happy for that to join the network. I know who to build it to. I'm confident that that is something that we can we can allow into our network that isn't going to disrupt things. When you start to work with a more agile environment where you're downloading profiles, the network operators similarly need to take control of what those SIM cards are doing, but now they're not in control of actually creating a card with those profiles on it. So instead, the mobile network operator prepares a profile ready for deployment over EUICC profile delivery. And that ID is loaded into the subscription manager data preparation module. That whole block, system manager data preparation and secure routing is a really key element and I covered it earlier on. Uh, it's so key that you can't operate those services unless you have been audited by GSMA uh, and you, you meet their requirements both procedurally but also physically. Access to those databases is so critical that they have to be run inside secure, fireproof, maximum security data centers with very limited access because the network operator is relying on only authorized devices to join their network that they are happy to use and they know who, who it belongs to and who to build data usage to. Similarly, on the other side of the diagram, you have the EOICC, the eSIM manufacturer. And the people who manufacture the cards and load up profiles in the factory, they also need to make sure that those cards are validated and available to receive a, a downloaded profile. So you'll see that over on the far side of the diagram uh, to the left hand side, there is an EUM, e that's the EUIC uh, unit manufacturer a diagram into the secure routing subscription manager block. And that's where we start to tie together. This is a, a genuine physical device card, e EUIC card or eSIM that is valid to download a profile from the data preparation section. So all the elements are playing together to say, this is a validated card, this is a validated profile. I'm going to use the subscription manager section to be able to pull those two things together and only download if I'm happy. The last piece to really look at in this diagram is the machine to machine service provider or the network vendor. That's the people who you will work with to buy your cellular connectivity. Uh, that could actually be a mobile network network operated directly, but more often than not in the EOICC world, there's going to be an independent company like Pelion who are able to pull on multiple um, mobile network operators to provide profiles into their data preparation subscription manager section so they can offer different vendors and different tariffs in different parts of the world in one service to you when you're operating your device. So typically you will have rules set up for which profiles to use in which devices. That could be country specific, it could be tariff or even product specific. And when the device first connects home, say it is a vending machine and you're having, you want to have one um, version of that vending machine, but it's sold in the Americas, it's sold in Europe, it's sold in Asia, and you usually work with different cellular providers. So you would have a rule set up so that when the device first connects, Bootstrap's home, a different tariff is, a different profile is downloaded to that device specific to that part of the world. If at some point in the future, you change the way your device is going to operate, or you add a new um, mobile network operator or virtual operator who has a more attractive tariff for your usage, you can now switch to that without physically having to visit, send technicians to site, the cost for changing the SIM card is vastly outweighed by the savings you're going to make on that tariff. The, the cost of sending a person out to each unit is so much higher that this really becomes 
useful if you want to make those when you want to make those changes without having to send people to site. And so you can always um, work with your service provider to take on board a new network operator who is able to push profiles into the subscription manager data preparation unit and then the vendor can use the subscription manager secure routing block to download that to your UICC device, do a tariff switch, a profile switch, and there you are, you're online again. So that's made sense, I hope, of this diagram and the process behind how eSIM UICC profile switching works. It's a really strong relationship between the vendors and making sure that uh, they have profiles that only allow specific devices onto their networks. There's a relationship with the UICC eSIM manufacturers to ensure that their devices are to spec and only spec or up to spec devices have their credentials loaded into the secure routing so that they can be um, download, they can receive those downloaded profiles and the vendor, the, the company who is able to trigger those things in real time. If you have any questions, please drop us a line. You can use the contact form at pelion.com um, or you can email me and I'll be happy to look at whatever you've got to, uh, to ask. Thanks very much. Thank you.